Hi, I'm Paul Worrell. I'm the founder and chief developer of Zonified. Today is the 2nd of July 2018 and um, I'm going to introduce you to this idea I've had about um, exploring semantic web on the blockchain. Um, there's other people that have had a look at it some time ago and I just took a few hours to see if I could um, get to the point where I could do some Sparkle queries on the Ethon model. So hopefully that's interesting for you and um, well, just uh, enjoy. It all started off when I was at DevCon 3 and I saw a presentation by um, Jamie Pitts on linking decentralized apps together with data um, or otherwise the, the semantic Ethereum. Now I had seen previously um, an article on Medium by um, a Johan Pfeffer and um, so I'd seen that somebody had already been thinking about what does semantic web and ontologies mean to um, Ethereum. So when I saw Jamie um, in November last year, um, it resurrected all of that um, previous work I'd done with semantics, um, culminating in um, sparkly code. And um, of course that came to um, sort of an end in 2014 and I, I stopped that project and just made the whole thing um, available and didn't really promote it um, at all after that. But there was some amazing um, concepts that I discovered when I was using Semantic in Sparky Code and applying the concepts to managing um, software code, its dependencies, all the artifacts, the infrastructure and the people involved with it. Um, so I did know what the potential was with semantics. So when um, I saw that presentation by Jamie, it, uh, it had me think, hmm, let's have a look at it. So this is really, um, you know, what the journey that I've taken and where I am now. So I did have a read of a couple of papers um, that Jamie had referred to. It looks like the Open University in the UK had, has already been looking at that relationship between blockchain and semantics, and so has um, the University of Bonn. So, um, uh, so I had a look at those. There was another paper by Hector Ugart, um, uh, in fact, that's probably related because it's still the University of Bonn. So um, I read those papers, reminded myself of what I'd done with Spiker Code, and then I had a really good look again at what um, Johan had done. And uh, I started to pick a place to start. So um, I looked through this article um, and uh, I spotted this particular view, which is the model of a block. So I'm going to rapidly go through something that I've done to start to give me the ability to comprehend how semantics might work um, with the blockchain. In fact, there was no uh, uh, implementation um, of Ethon uh, in, in Johan's project. So, um, you know, there was nothing for me to build on. So, so I had to find a place to start. So one was picking a place in the model which I did. Then the second thing I did was, okay, how am I gonna get at the data? And I found a, um, an interesting Medium article here by um, Evgeny Medvedev, um, exporting and analyzing Ethereum blockchain. So he's got uh, some instructions here. All these links are put at the bottom, right? But he's got some instructions here on how to use some Python scripts that he's written to do uh, an ETL to pull out of the blockchain um, uh, uh, 
the data effectively. He's doing it in particular to with the destination of running SQL queries on it, and he's talking about how to use AWS. That's completely unnecessary for me. So all I did is on my own uh, test server, um, followed the instructions, started Geth, uh, allowed it to sync. I did run out of disk space, <laughs> um, but I had enough space uh, or enough data pulled out to actually explore it, which I'm gonna show you. So once, once I'd got sufficient um, a sufficiently populated geth node. I stopped geth. Um, I followed his instructions to clone his GitHub repository with his Python Ethereum ETL scripts in it. Okay, and then actually ran it. I ran it over a small population uh, of the block size, um, you know, because I, I, I didn't have much space, um, and, and stopped there. Okay, so where did that put me? So I uh, created a Git repo and um, started fleshing a few things out and I've been checking them in. So you're free to go and have a look. So let's have a look at what I did. So um, first of all, I started to think about um, how I was going to map uh, the data. So the data that I got from the ETL uh, looks a little bit like this. You've got a start block and an end block, and then we've got a CSV file. Um, so if we opened this CSV file, it might be a bit too big for me to, yeah, it's too big, too big for me to show it to you. So um, in the um, editor here. So, um, you just have to trust me that that data has a certain schema. So these are the schemas that I just sort of fleshed out. We're only interested at the moment for demo purposes on the block. So these are the columns and uh, the data and the data types uh, that the ETL provides, right? So a column one, a block number, then we get the block hash, the parent hash, the nonce, etc. Okay. Um, so the first thing I had to do, because the names of these attributes and the attributes that are available differ from the Ethon ontology. So when we look at the actual Ethon ontology here, we can see we've got a concept um, uh, of a block. Um, a block has a parent, block two. A block can have known uncles. Um, a block is a type of block. Um, and a block is a subclass of uncle. Um, so, you know, you can go and have a look at the ontology here. Um, as I say, I'll put the notes down below. Um, but I had to have a look at what kind of attributes existed on a block, what the relationships were to other instances of concepts and create a mapping between the ETL output um, and what the ontology um, should be materialized like. Okay, so um, so this is the ETL columns, as I've just said. So I then created a map. Now, um, the way that I used that, is I just used a handlebars uh, template, as a JavaScript uh, uh, template mostly used for web development. Um, and what we're seeing here is what's known as uh, triples. Um, each line represent, representing a subject, a predicate, and an object, or um, another way of describing that is, uh, you know, a subject, uh, the, a name of a, a property, and the property itself. Um, wasn't very elegant in the way that I did this. Each triple is just explicitly defined, so there's kind of some duplication. So this is a template for one, uh, one particular block um, record found in the ETL. Okay, so so I did that mapping. Um, uh, can't really explain all the details in this quick introduction, but you can see I tried to create, look at the ontology in Ethon, um, and then translate the property types or the predicates across to what would be found 
in the uh, input data. So um, here we're talking about um, these are these are sort of the placeholders. So the block number. So this is the block number, then block hash. So I'm defining the triples for the relationships between a block and a property. Um, this here is the actual Ethon model predicate. And then these are the placeholders to replace by the columns in the mapping file. Block number, block hash, block parent hash, block nonce, etc. Um, there are more elegant ways of putting together the what's called the triples. Um, but I, j I just kept it simple at the moment um, because you can get into a lot of ugliness uh, and confusing uh, errors in passing the triple. So I tried to keep it simple before I start improving it. So that is the template. Um, I then wrote a, a bit of Java, JavaScript. Um, as I say, I'm using handlebars um, to process the input file and then um, you know, create the records. So I'm effectively opening the file, which is the chain data. So this is the chain data. Um, in the GitHub, I'm not actually putting the chain data in there. So if anybody wants to explore this, you'll have to be aware to produce your own data using that ETL tool and then um, stick it into your um, code repository you know, and then define it in here. All hard coded, you know, it's typical ugly, ugly stuff at the moment. Um, so I then define the mapping file, which is this handlebars template. We read the file um, and then we start to actually process the input stream, um, pass the records. And I got a function here called triplize, which takes the data and applies the template. So, um, you can see here that it's clearly um, I've, I've defined an object here which is saying what, which um, column uh, you know is, is, is in which part of the data okay so um, and, and I just log the result so if it's all using node so if I go into scripts here um, just for your information I'm running uh, NVM current uh, node 950. So if I um, just run node on this uh, block script, okay, you can see it's just processing that input file, applying the template, and then spooling out the records. I'm just going to do a control C on it, um, cycle up a little bit until I run out of records and then take a few of these. I know that th th these are the um, triples that have been produced by applying the template and the data. So um, I'm going to take, what should I do? I'll take a few of these. One, let's just take, I don't know, four of them, he says. He can't control his own computer. So I'll take these ones. Now, you know, it's a bit hacky at the moment, but I've got an example TTL file here. If you're familiar with um, semantic web and RDF, etc., you'll you'll notice I've applied already specified some prefix in, prefixes in here. So I've cut and paste the uh, triples that are produced. Um, underneath these pre prefixes. So now I have some example, um, what's called turtle data. Um, so now I can run some scripts just to test to see what happens. So here's some examples of some queries. Now Sparkle is the language you use to query these triples. So um, I'm actually using, if I show you my query script, I'm actually using um, ARQ, which is a utility in the Jenna, Apache Jenna um, semantic web sort of application framework. Okay, so you can follow the, uh, the instructions in, on there to get hold of um, ARQ. 
right? You just install it, it'll end up being on the command line. So you can see I've just got this script, ARQ, you actually pass it some data. So I've hard coded it to pick up that um, example.ttl. And then I can pass in the name of a query that it will just run. Okay, so I've got a number of query, query for the blocks, query block stats, and just general query for all triples that exist. So if we start off with a general query, this is like the hello world query of semantics. So we're selecting all the subjects, all the predicates, all the objects, um, one, two, three in the triple. Um, we're just selecting them all up to a maximum of 25. We've only got four records, I think, anyway, and then it'll print them on the screen. I just go into tests and I run query.sh and I want to run the Sparkle query triples. Okay, so um, it's come and give us some output. Um, and it's saying it failed to load the data. Triples not terminated by dot. All right, so I hacked around a bit and I noticed I've got an error here in my mapping. Um, so it wasn't passing properly. So I'm just going to fix that problem with the appropriate way of declaring a data type um, in, uh, in uh, RDF here, or triples. Um, and I'm going to regenerate everything. So I'm going into my scripts uh, and just running the node script again, the JavaScript. All right, so just run that, boo, let it run for a bit. It probably run for a long time and fill my disk up. Um, so again, just to repeat, it's uh, processing that CSV file and then applying the template to produce triples uh, that, mo that use the Ethon model. So I'm just going to grab a few of these triples now. And paste them, stick them in my examples folder here underneath the pre prefixes and uh, move back into my test scripts and run try and run that first script again. Um, so I'm trying to run the, just the basic triples, which just prints out the triples crudely. Okay, there we go. Not easy to read. I haven't got time to format things nicely. Um, but what you're seeing here is that the output of the query is the subject, the predicate and the object. Um, so the subject now, this here is um, saying IBB, which is a prefix that was declared at the top, IBB. So this is a prefix to um, the block number. I've decided to construct that. I've decided to use this URL. This is all part of how you express things in the data format of the semantic web. And whether this is correct or not is not the point. Um, whether it should be modeled or, or um, instantiated like this isn't the point at the moment. Um, but we've got a block number. Okay, well, it's not a block number. It's an instance of a block. It just happens to be expressed as the block number. But we've got the block creation time. Um, okay, there. Um, we've then got same block but now we have the block hash that's the block hash then we have again the same block the parent block uh, same block again block extra data um, the block size okay and um, uh, we have um, see th th these predicates here are actually the model predicates from the Ethon model, 
but this one here is actually a model product predicate showed literally based on the W3C um, RDF schema syntax. As I have not put here a um, prefix for this, then it's printed out the whole underlying um, type reference. Okay, um, so I won't bother fixing that at the moment. So it's saying that the type is a block, so that's metadata. So this block has uh, a type of block. So if we look at the Ethan model, that is a block. That's that part of the model there. Okay. And, um, and then it's, it's pulled the block gas limit. Um, this is the actual number of the block, which is actually an attribute on the model. Um, to do block hash number. So we can see an attribute um, of an instance of a block is its number. Um, I just so happen to have used the number in you know, defining the unique identifier for this particular block, which obviously makes sense. Okay, then we've got all the other properties, um, etc. So let's just run a couple of other queries. So uh, if we have another another query, if we just look at say blocks. So what we'd seen there is all the triples, no matter what they were. Now I'm just I'm, I'm having a more refined query. Um, sorry, tests blocks. So here you go, this is a Sparkle query that's just selecting the block and its number um, by matching all triples that have a predicate of number um, as per the Ethon um, ontology here. Okay, so um, run that. Okay. So this is a bit easier to read. Um, we've, all got, we've got all kinds of warnings that are coming up about around types. Um, these are to-dos now, uh, if I go ahead and try and clean this up. There are certainly some issues with types that are defined in Ethon and um, how the data is actually represented. Um, if you're familiar with Ethereum, you'll recognize the importance of prefixing the hex numbers with 0x but it seems like semantic uh, data types are not very um, forgiving on using that 0x. So I have to decide how to solve some of these problems if I decide to proceed playing around with semantic web and the blockchain. But this is the output, block and block number. We're just seeing the block and the block number, pretty obvious, okay? Um, so let's now try block stats. So block stats, um, this time we're a little bit more elaborate. So we're selecting the block, um, the number and the parent block and uh, grabbing another property at the same time. So we're saying, uh, get me the block, uh, the property number, the property block hash and the property uh, has parent block and that will be an instance of the parent block. What's cool about Sparkle, you can do transitive queries. That gets kind of advanced. I'm not gonna do that here, but it's one of the sort of graph um, resolution techniques you've got. Um, I don't think the blockchain has, well, it doesn't, uh, the Ethereum blockchain doesn't have a very exotic graph to traverse. It's really only the parent blocks and the uncles. Um, but I've got this vision that if I integrate some of the smart contract um, uh, uh, concepts, we might end up with uh, some interesting data shapes, uh, such as I was getting with Sparkly Code. All right, so let's just run this query. Block stats. So here you can see it's saying this is a block, that's its number, and that's its parent block. So effectively on the GitHub that I've created, um, you know, we've got the basic uh, instructions where to find out 
how to do an ETL from your geth node, um, where you'll find uh, information about the Ethon ontology, which describes the structure of the Ethereum blockchain. Um, some to-dos that I'm putting on here as I'm evolving uh, the product and thinking about other features, characteristics. So uh, really just uh, clone this and help me out. You know, help me explore it and see what we can do. Cool. Thanks very much. Whoop-de-doo! What does it all mean, Basil?